Hey, it's me. Big week this week, and I've been in your face all week long. But it's Thursday night, and we're going to be studying the Word of the Lord together right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And I want you to come. You know what I'm going to talk about tonight? I'm going to talk about uh, Alice Bailey's plan to promote a inter faith movement. Yes, she wanted to promote a interfaith movement to destroy Christianity. And I want to show you how this destructive plan is in place. But we who believe God, we're going to be just fine because the God of the Bible has it all in control. Uh, I think they're forecasted that it may rain this evening. But you have good windshield wipers. You know how to drive. Put on the safety belt, wrap up, and come on out and let's study the word of the Lord together. Now, by the way, you know, I've been talking a lot this week, and we've been talking about what's happening in our state with House Bill 2 and how uh, wicked people are making a big deal out of common sense legislation. I'm sure everybody who watches, who's watching, believe that men should use the men's room and that women should use the women's room. So I'm not going to go into that. You see two interviews that I did, uh, that we did this week concerning the same subject, and thank you for your prayers and for, for standing by me. But I just want to mention something, because we got a butt kicking the other day that we deserve. In Atlanta, Georgia, the, the people tried to pass House Bill 757, which would have protected pastors from performing same-sex marriages and would have protected churches from being forced to use their facilities for ceremonies against their religious beliefs. Governor Deal of Atlanta caved. He caved because pressure was being put on him from uh, many corporations in the area. And guess what? Our good friend, the, the organization that is so powerful that we've changed our church services to accommodate. An organization that is so powerful that born again, saved, sanctified, and spirit-filled preachers, deacons, women, men, oh my, have no problem whatsoever with leaving church early so they can make catch watch the game or not even attending church at all, setting up in a football stadium while service on a Sunday, while service is going on who have no problem if they can get their hand on those sacrosanct, oh my God, Super Bowl tickets, have no problem. I mean, will boast and post and do selfies of themselves at the Super Bowl on the Lord's Day. The NFL threatened that if if uh, the if you pass House Bill 557, which, which simply states, pastors, Shouldn't perform same-sex weddings. Don't have to do it. Pastors should not. Churches should not allow ceremonies. That's against those churches' religious beliefs. The NFL said, well, we, we may, we, it may hurt uh, 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 Atlanta's uh, bid for getting the Super Bowl in, uh, in uh, uh, 2019. Okay? The NFL says this goes against our anti-discrimination policy, the NFL. Now, what's funny, what's laughable is that the NFL has an anti-discrimination <laughs> policy. Now, this is funny. There are 1,700 players who play for the NFL. 1,200 are African American. And yet we only have five black head coaches. What discrimination policy? And only seven GMs um, in the NFL. So you, you're telling me, NFL, uh, and we ain't going to even talk about the, the Rooney rule. Thank, thank you, Mr. Rooney, for trying. But, you know, I, I wonder how, to, how, how do the coaches feel uh, knowing that they're only getting an interview because of a form of affirmative action. And it has to be put into place because the rich white guys, no matter how good that brother can block, tackle, kick, throw the ball, yes, they finally let us quarterback, and throw the ball and run the ball and tackle it, whatever. Without the Rooney rule, many a black 
head coaches didn't even get looked at. What discrimination policy? I say to you, NFL, you should be working on your chronic traumatic encephalopathy. You got guys who are taking their own lives, blow, shooting themselves in the heart, sparing their brains because their brains are being rattled. And listen, with 1,200 of the 1,700 players being players of color, that's a black problem. So, NFL. Spare us this, uh, spare me this anti-discrimination policy. You put pressure on the church, but I must say, we ask for it. We treat the NFL, you football fans out there, and I thank God for football. I played the game. It's a great game, but it's not a religion. You, you even hear people say, football is our religion. It's like a religion. Well, it's not like a religion to me. My religion is Christianity. And for those of you who love the Lord, hey, it shouldn't be a religion to you. Because look at this. These people have turned on us. They put pressure on the governor. Hey, if you sign this bill, we might just, you. this is going to lessen your chances of getting the Super Bowl because we are with the LGBT community. How about looking out for some brothers? How about giving brothers a chance to be head coaches? How about giving more brothers a chance to be a GMs? Because we can do more than lift weights, tackle, and kick and run. We can think. But I guess you only believe the LGBT community. Oh, and I'm sorry. LGBTQ community can do that. So I just had to throw that in, my friends. Come out tonight. I'm not going to preach about the NFL. I'm, I won't talk to you about this interfaith movement. But I had to get this off my chest because there's so much hypocrisy when it comes down to this new protected class. You know who I'm concerned about? I'm not concerned about protecting some guy standing in the ladies' room. I'm, I'm concerned about protecting a woman in the ladies' room with a guy in the ladies' room. We know he's got to be off in his head because he thinks he's a woman. You know, he's got to be off. I mean, he, he, he thinks he's a woman. He's dressed like a woman. He's in the ladies' room, and he wants to have the right to be in there. So I'll see you tonight. And uh, another last thing, last thing for sure. Companies like Apple and others, they're trying to put pressure on our state. But I say to you, Apple, if you can do business in China, you can do business anywhere. If you can do business in China, how dare you threaten uh, not doing business in North Carolina. See you tonight. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. Get it on time. You want to hear this. It's going to bless you. <laughs> Take care.